Though the heavens should be simple, they are not. In the last days of the Roman Empire, at the fall of civilization, one woman, a legend ahead of her time, stood to unite mankind. Whatever may be going on in the streets, we are brothers. Where are the troops? No army could contain that mob. He's calling for the annihilation of women and children. As long as God grants me the strength, I will purify this city. All these years I've been studying, I could just unravel this. Why should this assembly accept the counsel of a woman? Enough! If you choose to do nothing, though, you will continue to do the same thing over and over again until there is no one left in this city. No people for this government to govern. Hypatia of Alexandria Before I begin about Hypatia, here is a little historical background. In the 4th century BC, Alexander the Great united the feuding city-states into a single Greek nation, which expanded beyond Greece itself. Alexandria was founded in 331 BC by General Ptolemy I after the conquer of northern Egypt. Alexander the Great then established Ptolemy as ruler of Egypt. Later, Ptolemy founded the museum, which was to become the center of learning, with libraries holding hundreds of thousands of books. In 312, Constantine the Great became the first Christian Roman emperor. He established Christianity as the state religion. In 324, Constantinople was founded and became the third major center of the eastern part of the Roman Empire, along with Athens and Alexandria. In 364, the Roman Empire split. The Western Empire was ruled from Rome, while the Eastern Empire was ruled from Constantinople, which controlled Alexandria. Theon of Alexandria, father of Hypatia, was born sometime between 340 and 365. In 412, St. Cyril of Alexandria became the new archbishop. The previous archbishop, Cyril's uncle, Theophilus, orchestrated a powerful private militia of Nietzschean monks and demolished the temple of Serapis, as well as put an end to the museum built by Ptolemy. Cyril followed his uncle's footsteps with now his private militia and closed and destroyed the Novatian churches. This led the Jewish extremists to carry out a massacre of Christians, which then led to the expulsion of Jews from Alexandria by Cyril. This was the start of the battle of power between Cyril and Orestes. The civil governor of Alexandria, Orestes, flourished in 415. He was Christian, but a tolerant Christian that was accepting of other religions and philosophies. This made him far from godly in the eyes of his fellow Christians. Orestes even took frequent counsel with Hypatia. That same year in 415 was the death of Hypatia. Hypatia was known for her physical and intellectual beauty and was bragged about by many, including Damascus and Socrates. No one doubted Hypatia's intelligence or authority. Hypatia was born sometime between 350 and 375. Unfortunately, she is mostly recorded for her death. As quoted in the book, she was a pagan and Neoplatonist in a city where Christians, both Orthodox and heretical, secular and ecclesiastical authorities, pagans of highly diverse views, and Jews, all coexisted in mutual enmity. As part of her devotion to her work and beliefs, Hypatia never married and had a dedication to celibacy. Hypatia was also an astronomer, geometer, and algebraist. She received the majority of her mathematical education from her father. Hypatia also did a lot of her work with people of Synesius. 
It is possible that she was the only higher learning available in Alexandria because of no reference to any other teachers. Hypatia lived the majority of her days as a philosopher. She would go into the middle of town to give public speeches. It is said that her beliefs and values helped tolerate many Christians. Here is a clip depicting Hypatia with some of her students, including Orestes. Earth is the center of the cosmos and revolving around it, the sun and the five wanderers, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, obstinately disobeying the law of the circle. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Ptolemy shows us that they do obey. The fact that we see them move in a loop is due to the joint effect of two circles, one that travels around the Earth and another lesser circle proper to each wanderer. Well, look, they're precise. So you see, it's not heaven that errs, but our eyes that deceive us. Well said, David. I'd like you to know that your exposition shows me that you've been paying closer attention than uh, one or two others here. <laughs> I tell you, the gods should have consulted me before they created anything. And why do you say that, Orestes? It all seems so whimsical. Why the joint effect of two circles? Wouldn't it be more perfect if the wanderers didn't wander? And a single circle gave sense to everything? Orestes, by what authority do you judge the work of God? What is wrong with you Christians? Can a man no longer open his mouth in this city? You criticize creation, you criticize our Lord, and you offend us. You should move out to the desert. You won't hear anything to offend you out there. <laughs> you know nothing of what you speak. None of you. Dionysus, what is Euclid's first rule? Why the question? Just answer me. If, uh, if two things are equal to a third thing, then they are all equal to each other. Good. Now, are you both not similar to me? Yes. And you, Orestes? Yes. Now, I am actually saying this to everybody here in this room. More things unite us than divide us. Now, whatever may be going on in the streets, we are brothers. We are brothers. I want you to remember that brawls are for slaves and for riffraff. Now, I think we should all honor Davis with some very well-earned applause. So... Hypatia's mother is unknown. Her father is Theon of Alexandria, born around 340, with an unknown date of death. He was an astronomer and mathematician, mainly as a commentator for mathematical works. He was a contemporary of Pappus, and after Pappus' death, Theon became the leading mathematician of his time. Theon's fam most famous commentaries were Ptolemy's Almagus and the Handy Tables, and Euclid's Elements. Hypatia helped with many of his editions and commentaries. Theon was not so much known for being an innovator, but as a preserver and for having the talent to translate mathematical works for students so they could better understand the material. Hypatia possibly had a brother, Epiphanes, who was referred in some of Theon's dedications. A crowd of Christian zealots made up of monks of Nutria and followers of Cyril, along with leader Peter the Lector, blocked Hypatia's path and pulled her from her carriage. They then dragged her into a church, where they proceeded to strip her and batter her to death with roofing tiles. Afterwards, her body was torn apart and burned, fragment by fragment, throughout the church. It is possible her death was due to her pagan Neoplatonist beliefs or because she was close to Orestes, who was fighting his own battle with Cyril. Either way, Hypatia's life was taken too early, for she still had much more to give.
first is Hypatia's edition of her father's commentary of Ptolemy's Almagest. The Almagest is Ptolemy's version of the solar system and its motion. This commentary was written by her father, with help from Hypatia, and in it they introduced a certain long-division algorithm specific to use in astronomy. Second is Hypatia's commentary on Apollonius's conic. Conics is an introduction to the property of the cone and the conic section. Third is Hypatia's commentary on the astronomical canon. It is argued whether this was an addition of Ptolemy's handy tables or a commentary of Ptolemy's almagest. Fourth is Hypatia's commentary on Diophantus's Arithmetica. The Arithmetica is a collection of algebraic and number theory problems, along with their solutions. Unfortunately, any work outside of Hypatia's commentaries and editions were not recorded nor saved. Though there are some variations to the facts concerning Hypatia, it goes unquestioned that her contributions to philosophy and mathematics are invaluable. The clips earlier shown are from the movie Agora. The material from this presentation comes from Michael A. B. Deacon's book, Hypatia of Alexandria, Mathematician and Martyr. The book cites from three main sources, the Pseudo-Lexicon, a 10th century encyclopedia, PG, a collection of Greek writings important to the history of the Christian church, and a narrative of the 7th century John of Nikku. It is important here to note that due to the time period, not all dates and details are completely accurate. Some are only educated formulations based upon separate documentations. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of Hypatia of Alexandria.